My name is Peter Thomas, President of Resource Compliance. In this short video, we'll provide instructions for completing the General System Checklist from Appendix B of IIAR Standard 6. The checklist questions contained in IIAR 6 Appendix B are derived from a legacy document named IIAR Bulletin 109. For years, the Bulletin 109 checklists, or B109s, served as the gold standard for documenting annual mechanical integrity inspections for ammonia refrigeration equipment. In 2019, IIAR retired Bulletin 109 when the first edition of Standard 6 was published. Standard 6 addresses the minimum requirements for inspection, testing, and maintenance of ammonia refrigeration systems and includes slightly altered versions of the B109s in Appendix B. Bulletin 109 contained a checklist named General Safety that was slightly altered and renamed General System when Standard 6 was published. The simplest part of completing the General Inspection Checklist is filling out the contact information. Each IIAR 6 checklist requires the inspector to indicate the location, owner, and physical address of the system. The contact's name and phone number should be the facility representative responsible for ensuring the inspection is completed. Additionally, the inspector must write his or her own name and the date of the inspection. The ID or tag number belongs in the upper right corner. Refrigeration systems are not always given a unique ID or tag number, so NA is often indicated here. Unlike most of the other inspection checklists, after completing the contact information section, the general system checklist jumps right into the inspection questions. The general system checklist has a total of 23 questions that should be answered yes, no, or not applicable. The wording of each question is such that a yes answer is always positive and a no answer indicates a deficiency. Some questions may not be applicable and should be answered NA. Item A asks if the equipment in the system is labeled and has legible nameplates. A proper label consists of the component name and ID number. Since this shell and tube heat exchanger label ID number is so small, that should be marked as an item to be addressed. Items B and C ask if the equipment in the system is suitable for ammonia and operating within limits. Suitability for ammonia can be verified by the equipment specifications provided by the manufacturer. There are many operating limits that should be observed. Some of the more noteworthy operating limits for a compressor are suction pressure, discharge pressure, oil pressure, and oil level. The pressures can be monitored from analog gauges or microprocessors. Item D requires the inspector to verify that supports and anchorage are adequate. The anchorage should be inspected to ensure nuts are tight and free from corrosion. This plate and frame heat exchanger anchorage has an unacceptable level of corrosion that must be addressed. The refrigeration equipment should have safe access for normal service and maintenance. Ideally, permanent ladders, catwalks, or other means to access the system's pumps, fans, condenser, and evaporators will be available. When permanent access is not available, facilities must utilize extension ladders or aerial lifts to access the high or hard to reach places. Checklist items F, G, and H are specific to leaks and other equipment deficiencies. The inspector must do a visual inspection of each piece of equipment in the system to verify the equipment is free from vibration and leaks. Item H directs the inspector to check for ice buildup, which is possible to see on the low side of the system. Ice buildup is particularly relevant to air cooling evaporators. Excessive ice on the evaporator fins will reduce efficiency and indicates that the units are not being properly defrosted. Item I asks if there is adequate protection against traffic hazards. Refrigeration equipment can be located throughout the facility and it's imperative components are adequately protected from potential impacts from forklifts, aerial lifts, service trucks, or semi-trailers. It is not uncommon for ammonia piping bridges to extend throughout the facility and can be located in heavily trafficked areas. Machinery rooms protect much of the high side equipment from contact, but where equipment is stored outdoors, Barrier posts can also protect the equipment from impact. All equipment must have sufficient instrumentation for monitoring the operating conditions per item J in the checklist. Most of the instrumentation for monitoring equipment will be located inside the machinery room, but the evaporator's pressure gauges are often located on the valve groups, which could be located near the evaporator or on the roof. 
Items K and L pertain to oil draining. Item K asks if oil pots have been installed at all points where oil must be drained. Oil pots are not required according to IIAR's design standard, Standard 2, but at minimum, oil drain valves must be self-closing, which is the question asked in Item L. Item M asks if a sign in the machinery room prominently displays the name, address, and telephone number of the installing servicing contractor. The sign must also include the approximate quantity of ammonia in the system, the lubricant and name amount, and the field test pressure applied when the system was constructed. Item N asks if the aisles in the machinery room are clearly marked and clear from any obstructions. This machinery room is in excellent condition with clearly marked aisles. Items O and P pertain to the machinery room exit doors. Item O asks if there is more than one exit from the machinery room. Item P asks if the principal and additional principal machinery room doors have required placarding per IIAR Standard 2. The 2021 edition of Standard 2 recommends that the machinery room doors must have the following signage. Refrigeration machinery room, authorized personnel only. NFPA 704 placarding with a 330 designation. Caution, ammonia sign, PPE requirements. Item Q asks if the exits are clear of piping and other obstructions. Item R asks if covers are securely fastened on all electrical panels and junction boxes. On this compressor, there are exposed wires on the jack water solenoid valve and two of the pen switch covers are missing. Item S asks if maintenance and repair logs, including oil management, is maintained at the facility. Many facilities utilize computerized maintenance management software, or CMMS, to manage maintenance activities. Records must be reviewed to ensure all important activities are being completed. Item T asks if ammonia cylinders are connected to the system. It is rare for a system to be configured this way, so this question is typically answered N-A. Item U asks if the machinery room floor and system are clean of oil, grease, and water. This screw compressor has noticeable oil on the ground that must be cleaned up. Item V serves as a catch-all for other concerns that the inspector may have observed. The area at the bottom of the checklist can be used to write a description of the deficiencies. For example, these paw prints were observed on an oil separator and are an indication that an animal has been inside the machinery room, which must be corrected. Item W inquires if a refrigerant sample has been taken within the past three years to verify that the ammonia is free from contamination and excessive water content. This requirement only applies to low temperature systems operating in a vacuum. This concludes the General System IIAR6 Appendix B Checklist. I trust you found this information useful. We have more videos on our channel about ammonia refrigeration and process safety management. Feel free to check them out if you're interested.